Reddit moderators are destroying the entire internet. In fact, Reddit moderators might just be the worst thing to have ever happened in internet history. And by the end of this video, I promise you that you'll agree with me. You know, a Reddit moderator is a lot like a teacher's pet at school. The teacher's pet was that guy we all knew who felt superior to the rest. The guy who'd boss everyone around. The guy who'd tattle on everyone for breaking insignificant rules. You could almost smell their power trip. But what if this guy could boss around millions in the most petty ways imaginable? Well, that's where Reddit moderators come in. Reddit moderators moderate Reddit for free with their only compensation being the illusion of authority. These powerless and deeply troubled people look to exert power in any way they can. Ooh, your account's only a year old. You only had one cake day. You can't post here. They're the same types of people who become abusive police officers, but instead of policing crime, Redemods policed language. In 2020, Redemods policed language so badly that they ended up deleting 6% of all Reddit posts, and this is because 6 power hungry mods are now in control of 92 of the top 500 subreddits. So then the real question is, who are these anonymous moderators policing the internet? Why would anyone moderate thousands of subreddits and millions of posts for free? And most important of all, how did 92 of the top 500 subreddits fall into the hands of 6 power hungry mods? Well, the answer to these questions goes a lot deeper than I initially expected. Because to understand the Reddit mod, you need to understand Reddit. You need to understand where it all went wrong, because somewhere, somehow, Reddit turned into everything it swore to destroy. Reddit never used to promote tyranny and censorship. Reddit never deleted 6% of all posts. In fact, Reddit used to be a platform for tolerance and free speech. So what on earth happened? Well, this is the real story of the rise and fall of Reddit. The story begins in the dorm rooms of the University of Virginia. Co-founder of Reddit, Steve Huffman, otherwise known as Spez, was your typical nerdy character. He was that Zuckerberg type, geeky, computery, smart, and power hungry. And unbeknownst to him, Spez's perfect match was just across the dorm. So Alexis and I met in college. We were hallmates first year. He lived right across the hall from me. He was disappointed because he thought I was a girl. I was like, oh, Alexis and Mike live across the hall. It must be like a co-ed dorm, that's cool. <laughs> it wouldn't take long for Spez to realize Alexis was really just the charming version of himself. And over the following years, Alexis and Spez would become close friends. Their friendship was strengthened by their passion for computing. In order to monetize this passion, they would come up with their first idea for a startup, My Mobile Menu. And one of the ideas I had was for ordering food from your cell phone. I had told Alexis this idea once. He's like, we should totally build it. However, the idea was simply too far ahead of its time. After the pitch failed to gain enough financial support, the two would begin working on a new idea. During this time, internet culture was in its infancy. Internet memes were only just beginning to crop up here and there. And Spurs and Alexis caught on to this. They could tell that internet culture wasn't going anywhere soon. It was clear that if Spurs and Alexis could figure out a way to centralize internet culture, millions were to be made. And so Spurs and Alexis would set out to do just that. Their idea was to create a site that would be the front page of the internet. This would later become the adopted slogan of the website, but for now, the slogan was initially called SNU. The intention behind SNU was for people to ask what's new, although it wouldn't take long for them to realize the domain name was already taken. So a few other domain ideas were considered, Ubaloo, 360 Scope, Hot SNU, Ripe Fresh, Dose Dose, and numerous others. But eventually, the name Reddit was suggested by Alexis. And much like SNU, Reddit was a mix of the words Reddit, as in, I read it on Reddit. After receiving funding from angel investors, Reddit was released on the 23rd of June, 2005. Over the following months, both Alexis and Spez created numerous fake accounts in order to jumpstart the website, spamming the site with interesting links in order to give any unsuspecting visitors the illusion of a thriving online community. Alexis and I started submitting all the content just to keep the thing full, right? Because Reddit's no fun if the page is blank. We would come up with a post and a random username to give the impression that the site had more people on it. The Reddit team would expand not long after, and in November 2005, Reddit merged with competitor site Infogami. The merging of Infogami and Reddit would bring Reddit a new co-founder, a co-founder named Aaron Schwartz. This was a pivotal moment for Reddit. Aaron Schwartz becoming co-founder was the final piece of the jigsaw for Reddit's success. You see, Aaron was a computing prodigy. By the age of 13, Aaron had already created the site Info Network, a site serving as a user-generated encyclopedia. So it would seem that Aaron was the perfect guy to serve as a Reddit co-founder, and this was true. Because in the months following the merger, Reddit's popularity began to skyrocket. Although a few months into Aaron's arrival, things started to get rocky. 
This was because Aaron's view of the world differed greatly to Spezza's. Aaron viewed the internet as a tool to hold governments and corporations accountable. He thought the internet could be the ultimate tool for free speech, where anyone, anywhere could express their opinions freely. Aaron thought that information needs to be free, open, and unregulated. Although the same thing couldn't be said for Spez, Spez viewed the internet as an opportunity for business. This was the dividing line between Aaron and Spez, and in a way, it was this divide that would shape the internet as we know today. Two thousand and five was a revolutionary year. Facebook had just been released, YouTube was brand new, and Reddit was being spammed with Spezza's links. <laughs> in two thousand and five, the internet was still seen as something nerdy. This was a time two years before the release of the first iPhone. And we are calling it iPhone. Anything could happen. Aaron Schwartz wanted to steer the internet into being an electronic libertarian utopia, a world free from government regulation and corporate corruption. He wanted the internet to be a land of pure democracy, where each and every person had an equal say in the world, where real world leaders would be scrutinized in real time, where elites would be forced into open transparency. The internet offered an opportunity for ordinary people who weren't part of the power structure to take back power to themselves. And Aaron saw Reddit as a beacon of these principles, a hub for ordinary free thinkers. However, Aaron's view of the internet would be confronted by the other side, by the other tech giants who wanted their platforms to become the titans of the digital age. The side that wanted to consolidate and control massive percentages of internet traffic and the money that comes with it. Pioneers of the internet like Zuck wanted a small group of companies to decide what you can and can't say, and a small group of moderators to follow their orders. But Aaron hated these ideas. Aaron hated the corporate world and was motivated to do everything he could for free speech. And at the time, Aaron wasn't alone. In fact, co-founder Alexis could also see the importance of free speech. To Alexis, free speech was a right that must be protected. This is why Alexis actually joined Aaron in his campaign against Congress's Stop Online Piracy Act. Alexis even went so far as to launch the national anti-SOPA protests. This has become an issue that's much bigger than just saving the internet now. This is a fight to save democracy. It is a fight to show that our elected officials are beholden to the electorate, not to lobbyists. This was a period where a large proportion of tech giants actively defended the principles of free speech. And in this time, Reddit was a hub for somewhat serious or interesting discussion. It was diverse, but not stupid. But all of this would quickly change in the years to come. By late 2006, Reddit was taking off. The combination of Spez, Alexis and Aaron would prove to be a hugely successful business move, and people were noticing. In October 2006, Reddit was sold to Condé Nast Publications. Condé Nast Publications is a mass media company known for being the owners of Wired Magazine. At the time, Reddit was sold for a reported 10 to 20 million dollars. With the acquisition of Reddit, the team moved off to San Francisco. But for Aaron Schwartz, this was where things would start to go downhill. In the month after the acquisition, Aaron began to complain about the corporate influence over Reddit. Aaron claimed, Wired has tried to make the offices look exciting by painting the walls pink, but the grey office monotony sneaks through all the same. Grey walls, grey desks, grey noise. The first day I showed up here, I simply couldn't take it. By lunchtime, I'd literally locked myself in a bathroom stool and started crying. Aaron's thoughts on Reddit's takeover, along with a burning belief in free speech, meant the inevitable would happen. Aaron Schwartz was fired from Reddit in January 2007. And by the year 2009, the co-founders would all go their own separate ways and begin their new lives. Aaron used the money from Reddit and his knowledge on computing to embark on political action. On September the 25th, 2010, Aaron downloaded the whole Westlaw Legal Database in a project with Stanford Law students. The goal was to uncover the connections between the funders of legal research and the legal system itself. What Aaron found was incredibly disturbing. Aaron discovered that law professors in Stanford were receiving lobbying money from companies like ExxonMobil during oil spills, as this served as an effective route to bail themselves out of legal troubles. Aaron never released the documents, but it was reported that Aaron was going to analyze the data for evidence of corporate funding of climate change research that led to biased results. Following these actions, the FBI would begin to track Aaron's activity. Unaware he was being investigated, Aaron continued campaigning for free speech and political transparency. 
And so, yeah, it's true. Sites like WikiLeaks are going to be putting up some embarrassing material about what the U.S. government does, and people are going to be organizing to protest about it and try and change their government. You know, and that's a good thing. That's what all these First Amendment rights of free expression, of freedom of association are all about. And so the notion that we should try and shut those down, I think, just goes against very basic American principles. The principle, I think, is one that our founding fathers would have understood. If the Internet had been around back then, instead of putting post offices in the Constitution, they would have put ISPs. Well, it's definitely interesting to see. Aaron would travel across the US, giving live talks on the importance of a free and open internet. It was through this work that Aaron was able to gain enough support to prevent the Stop Online Piracy Act. This bill would be a huge, potentially permanent loss. If we lost the ability to communicate with each other over the internet, it would be a change to the Bill of Rights, the freedoms guaranteed in our Constitution, the freedoms our country had been built on, would be suddenly deleted. New technology, instead of bringing us greater freedom, would have snuffed out fundamental rights we'd always taken for granted. And I realized that day, talking to Peter, that I couldn't let that happen. Three months after the speech, Aaron was arrested following an indictment by federal prosecutors. Aaron's indictment contained charges of 50 years in prison and a $1 million fine. However, these charges were harsh for a reason. In 2012, the US government wanted to make an example of people breaking into confidential files. And with the US government's failure to extradite Julian Assange, Aaron Schwartz knew he was going to face the brunt of government power. There was no way the government was letting another WikiLeaks situation happen again. Aaron knew things were bad. Very, very bad. 26-year-old Aaron Schwartz was facing the prospect of living the rest of his life in a cage. Aaron had been cornered into a trap. And after five months of his arrest, Aaron Schwartz committed suicide. Aaron's death marked the end of an era. Up until now, the internet had always been free of censorship. Censorship was only really used for legal purposes to keep the internet somewhat civilized, and Reddit moderators did as they were meant to, filtering out spam, abuse, and managing small online communities. But all of this would change in 2014. You see, in the years after the co-founders left Reddit, Reddit was undergoing huge development. Reddit had tripled its page views, and in 2011, Reddit had gained 1 billion page views a month. Then in January 2012, Reddit doubled its page views again, gaining 2 billion views a month. There was no stop in sight. And by 2013, Reddit was receiving 56 billion page views and 71 billion page views in 2014. However, in 2014, Reddit took a turn for the worst. A turn that would make Reddit the model for the internet censorship we see today. Because before 2014, Reddit was getting a lot of scrutiny in the media. At the start, this was mainly about the jail-based subreddit, a subreddit which featured inappropriate and illegal photos of young girls. So Reddit responded to these criticisms rightly and removed the subreddit from the platform. But this media criticism was only scratching the surface, and for the next year, Reddit would be slandered for being a sexist platform. For example, the Huffington Post claimed that Reddit was sexist purely for being a male-dominated site. The claims of Reddit being sexist got so bad that co-founder Alexis pleaded Reddit users to quote, cool it with the sexist comments. Cool it with the anti-Semitic remarks. Alexis also claimed that Reddit is defined by quote, straight white men. The Atlantic and other magazines picked up on this, adding to the belief that Reddit was a place for sexist and straight white men. This scared Reddit stockholders and advertisers alike, which is why Reddit would suddenly undergo a radical change. The first steps towards Reddit's change would come with Ellen Powell's appointment as CEO of Reddit. In the lead up to Powell being CEO, Powell had gained notoriety in Silicon Valley, most famously for her gender discrimination lawsuit, where she sued the venture capital firm Kleiner Perkins for what she perceived to be sexist business practices. And whilst the lawsuit was unsuccessful, the media rallied behind her as a feminist saint. She was the perfect shield for Reddit. So Reddit employed her as CEO of the company in 2014. This was the moment Reddit changed for the worst. Alan Powell's rise to CEO created a new era of Reddit, an era Aaron Schwartz had spent his life warning against, an era defined by power mods, censorship, and propaganda. And it all began with Ellen Powell's announcement that Reddit was no longer a platform for free speech. The announcement came after numerous subreddits were banned by Reddit, but this time it wasn't for legal reasons, it was to escape the bad reputation Reddit was gaining from the consequences of free speech. A complete U-turn of Reddit's original policy stated by admins just two months beforehand, Reddit admins actually created a blog titled Every Man is Responsible for His Own Soul. In the blog post, Reddit admins repeatedly claimed the importance of free speech on Reddit. This is a quote from Reddit admins. 
We uphold the ideal of free speech from Reddit as much as possible, not because we are legally bound to, but because we believe that you, the user, has the right to choose between right and wrong, good and evil, and that it is your responsibility to do so. When you know something is right, you should choose to do it. But as much as possible, we will not force you to do it. However, these claims were just as hollow as Reddit's moderator guidelines. And when I talk about Reddit's moderator guidelines, this is what I mean. So basically, for Ellen Power to increase Reddit's censorship, Reddit would need power mods to handle the dirty work. And so in October 2014, the first major power mod was born, a mod known as Galloboob. Galloboob is the digital representation of Reddit's new era. Galloboob is a mod with over 36 million karma. He's termed a power mod for his vast control of the top subreddits, controlling huge subreddits like r oddly satisfying, r relationship advice, and r roast me. He's a power mod notorious for blocking comments critical of him. And not only comments, it got so bad that a subreddit calling out Galloboob's power hungry censorship was also banned from Reddit. This was the new era of Reddit, where those criticizing the power structure would be threatened with banishment. In the words of Ellen Powell, Reddit was no longer a bastion of free speech. But again, in 2014, this was just the tip of the iceberg. You see, in theory, Reddit's moderator guidelines require volunteers not to use a breach of one set of community rules to ban a user from another community, because these guidelines were created in a time when internet censorship was looked down upon. But this was a new era, an era when even more power mods would begin to emerge, like the infamous moderator Awkward the Turtle. Awkward the Turtle is in control of 2,572 subreddits, and like Galloboob, he's a mod notorious for silencing opinions he doesn't like. And unfortunately, these occurrences aren't anomalies either. Moderator tyranny in the last few years has gotten to an all-time high, with this model of censorship spreading across the internet like wildfire. But for now, in 2014, power mods were only just beginning to rear their ugly head. The most hated person on Reddit wasn't Gallo Boob or Awkward the Turtle, the real hatred was for the CEO, Ellen Powell. Reddit at the time still cared about free speech and internet censorship, because these ideas were at the core of Reddit, and with Ellen Powell's statements and actions, Redditors disliked her deeply. The watershed moment for this hatred came when former community manager David Croach gave an ask me anything about being fired from Reddit. David Croach stated that Ellen Powell dismissed him with one year of health coverage when he had cancer. As a result of this, a petition was made to remove Powell as CEO of Reddit. And so, on July the 10th, Ellen Powell resigned as CEO. But maybe Ellen Powell was just the instrument and not the musician, because Ellen Powell wasn't anywhere near as authoritarian as the person who would replace her. Spez. Spez's reign as CEO brought about the most change to Reddit, and as you could guess, this change wasn't good. Far from it. This quickly became obvious when Spez decided to scrub Aaron Schwartz's legacy on Reddit. Spez removed Aaron's position on Reddit's co-founder page and began scrubbing posts heralding Aaron Schwartz's legacy. This was a move that would define Reddit's new position on free speech. Next, Spez would introduce the quarantine, which was an effective tool to silence communities that didn't break any rules. Spez would use the quarantine to discredit content that Spez didn't like. And when I say Spez would censor content that he didn't personally like, I mean it was content that Spez personally didn't like. Infamously, Spez went into Reddit's database to alter and change comments he didn't like to distort posts in the R Donald subreddit. Of course, those in the Donald subreddit didn't take too kindly to the move, so the Donald called out Spez's direct censorship and manipulation of speech, and even created a subreddit dedicated to criticizing Spez. But to Spez, this was outrageous. How dare users enact their revenge? And so once again, Spez used his position as CEO to modify comments attacking him, changing these comments to instead criticize our Donald mods rather than himself. But Spez couldn't do all of this on his own. And this is where Reddit moderators would become notorious for their Mickey Mouse levels of censorship. Because as I mentioned earlier, Reddit's decline was catalyzed by the combination of power hungry moderators and censoring Reddit administrators. On this new Reddit, it became common practice for political opinions to be banned from the site. And it wasn't just Spez editing comments, it was Reddit moderators exerting their power over all those who disagree with the status quo. Which is why saying things like this would get you removed. Because Reddit power mods love that sweet sensation of bossing people around in the most minor ways imaginable. And I could go on and on about the countless examples of moderated tyranny, but I think it can all be perfectly summed up with this post right here. And just guess what happened to this post. It was of course removed by Reddit moderators. And not only that, the user who posted it was banned from over 40 major subreddits in 40 minutes. And you're banned. You can no longer post on wholesome puppers. So then you may be asking, 
How did these mods gain so much power? Why was Aaron Schwartz scrubbed from Reddit history? Why did Spez actively work to stifle the free speech of Reddit users? I mentioned earlier that these Reddit mods are like teachers' pets, with their only compensation being power. But this isn't the full story. You see, in order to run hundreds and thousands of subreddits, it takes a ridiculous amount of time, time that just isn't available to you if you're working or being a normal human being in society, unless you're being paid for this time. Power Mod Gallo Boot, for example, has been caught several times taking money from companies to shill their products on Reddit. One of these cases was with Gallo Boot advertising for Netflix on the subreddit Hail Corporate. When people on the subreddit began to call him out on it, he would remove every single critical comment. The Gallo Boots of Reddit are like the Cambridge Analytica for corporations. These mods have influence over millions and unrivaled power on the website. The trade-off being they do the dirty work for Reddit admins, and in return, Reddit turns a blind eye to their profiteering from advertising products. And this wasn't the only thing Reddit turned a blind eye to. I mentioned in my last video on Reddit that Reddit was being manipulated by big finance. I detailed in the video how corporations use Reddit as a tool for propaganda. But it's not only corporate propaganda, in fact Reddit has become the engine for the political censorship we see today. The most clear sign of this came with Hillary Clinton's campaign in 2016, which used our politics to promote articles favourable to Hillary. And every time Reddit has brought up the fact that Hillary Clinton received more money from the arms and weapons industry than any other candidate in history, these posts would be downvoted into oblivion. That's why you see posts criticising Black Lives Matter being banned, whereas pro-Black Lives Matter posts gain thousands of karma. It's why showing just some of the damage done by Black Lives Matter to ordinary people is removed. It's why just upvoting some posts on the site will get you banished from Reddit. It's why Reddit turns a blind eye to moderator abuse to keep the Reddit status quo in check. It's all to keep corporations and political interests interest groups happy. But nothing could define Reddit's era of censorship any better than Reddit's submission to the Chinese government. In 2019, Tencent's investment into Reddit was the final piece of the jigsaw in Reddit's censorship model. I say this because Tencent is run by the biggest censors of all, the Chinese government. The Dutch hacker Victor confirmed this by revealing millions of conversation and users' identities on Tencent were being sent to police stations across China. And just three days after this was revealed, the Tencent founder and chief executive had a seat in the National People's Congress. And in recent years, Tencent's activity has become more and more apparent. For example, Tencent has a 38% share in Discord, a 17% share in Snapchat, and it also has investments in game studios like Ubisoft, Activision, and a 40% share in Epic Games. And in 2019, Tencent invested $150 million into Reddit. Now, Reddit users are afraid that their beloved platform, known for uncensored free speech, is going to get censored to meet the demands of the Chinese Communist Party. See, Tencent has a history of censoring things the CCP doesn't like. Its Chinese platforms QQ and WeChat are both heavily censored and they work with Chinese authorities to give them access to user data. Amnesty International did a report back in 2016 on tech companies protecting users against threats to privacy and freedom of expression. The results? Not so good for Tencent. Chinese firm Tencent came bottom, the report reads, scoring 0 out of 100, ranked as the company taking least action on messaging privacy and the least transparent. Spez always claimed that Reddit would never remove content to appease Chinese investors, in fact, he even committed to never doing so, but as always the case, money speaks. Which is why viral posts stating that we need to start taking actions to stop China taking over the world would be removed. Pictures reminding people of the persecution of Uyghur Muslims would be scrubbed from mainstream subreddits. And of course, the famous pictures remembering the atrocities of Tiananmen Square are banned without any justification. Which is why on Reddit, anti-Western posts and comments are allowed, but criticizing Xi Jinping and the CCP? That's unacceptable. Or even criticizing LeBron James's sellout to China gets your posts removed from Reddit. It's very clear that Reddit has irreversibly changed. Long gone are the days of Reddit being a pioneer of free speech. The days of Aaron Schwartz's values being at the core of Reddit have been replaced by the values of power-hungry moderators, corporations, and Chinese propaganda. But what if Reddit's fool isn't just endemic to Reddit. Reddit has been the catalyst for a wave of censorship across the internet. The model of power-hungry moderators, out-of-control tech leaders like Spares and political propaganda is a model adopted by almost all social media sites. Since 2016, the Chinese Communist Party paid $20 million to outlets like the Los Angeles Times, the Chicago Tribune, 
and the Washington Post. Twitter, which now operates as a publisher, also received checks from the Chinese government totaling hundreds of thousands of dollars. Social media companies have learned from Reddit. Reddit has shown that the backlash to censorship is only minor once you have a group of power-hungry moderators controlling the flow of information. Because in 2019, a $3 million funding round led by Tencent brought Reddit's valuation to $3 billion, almost double Reddit's valuation just two years beforehand. And in 2021, Reddit's valuation is now at $6 billion. But the worst part of all is that Reddit moderators could have stopped this. They were the only people who had the power to do this. They could have shown that social media companies can't get away with the erosion of free speech. Reddit moderators showed that they had this power to change Reddit in 2015. In July of 2015, Reddit began experiencing a series of blackouts as moderators set popular subreddit communities to private. This was done in protest of the recent firing of Victoria Taylor. This Reddit moderator blackout ended up being highly successful and was one of the main reasons why Ellen Powell stepped down as CEO. So if moderators could do it back then, why not now? Well, because it doesn't fit into their tribe. It goes against the grain of their ideology. They don't want to be labelled controversial or conservative or lose any of that lucrative money shilling products from Reddit grants them. Instead, the moderators of Reddit are compliant to censor anti-China posts in exchange for power and money. This model of censorship has made Reddit bank. This is why you see censorship everywhere on the internet. It's an incredibly lucrative business practice. To receive Chinese funding means you could double your company's valuation in a ridiculously short time frame. The only cost this comes with is the fabric of Western civilization. That's the beauty of America, that you can be different. Right. You can be an individual, but now you cannot be an individual. And that's what North Korea did. On YouTube is that I talk about women getting sold in China. And those old videos get demonetized because, I mean, it's uh, somehow doesn't meet the YouTube guideline. Yeah. And they letting North Korean regime to have their propaganda channel on YouTube. So they give a platform to dictatorship, but they do not want to give a platform to the people who is fighting the human rights justice fight. Reddit has been at the core of this censoring trend. Reddit has shown how easy it is to get moderators to do the dirty work. Reddit has shown how easy it is for users to accept censorship by controlling the narrative. Reddit has shown that free speech is no longer a right. This precedent in censorship has given the go-ahead for all the other tech giants to censor. And people passively accept this because when all dissent is silenced, you feel alienated as if your voice doesn't have any support, because you never see and connect with all those who don't want to see the erosion of a free and open internet. And Reddit moderators could have acted as the final buffer, they could have been the final force to stop the censoring trend, but instead, they turn their back on free speech and the country for greed and power. This behavior is anti-Western to the core. Throughout history, the default style of governance has always been dictatorship. And to be in power, you have to be ruthless. You have to punish your enemy in the public eye. You have to censor speech that doesn't go along with the government projection. Every king and emperor did the same thing until the United States. The United States, a country which understood the importance of freedom of speech. The Founding Fathers knew this because they understood human nature. They understand what had happened in the past when free speech was stifled. They knew the dangers of censoring. But now we see the people who are willing to give all of that up for power and greed. This is what makes the fall of Reddit so frustrating. Reddit had the potential to be one of the greatest social media platforms of all time. Reddit had the power to change the way we look at society. Reddit could have opened so many doors for interesting discussion, unconfined to conventional expectations. It could have opened the door for so many others who didn't fit inside the mold of mainstream culture. But instead, Reddit turned its back on this potential, simply because Reddit let go of its founding core free speech. And now a decade later after Aaron Schwartz's death, and it's as though Aaron's work never existed. Reddit was the only social media site that could have actually paved the way for a free and open internet. Moderators could have held Reddit admins accountable to the community and the principles of free speech. And when you remember that Reddit was a key reason for abolishing the Stop Online Piracy Act, it makes Reddit's demise seem like that much more of a missed opportunity. And in a cruel twist of fate, Reddit's decline into censorship has breathed life into a new era defined by censorship. The media, celebrities, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, all of them have transitioned into adopting Reddit's model of censorship. 
When Reddit abandoned free speech to start censoring people who didn't fit into the mainstream narrative and government propaganda, it represented the real world transition into the control of information. The cogs behind Reddit's censorship needs to be called out. In the words of Aaron Schwartz, when people put their thumbs on the scale and try to say what you can and can't say, we should fight back, both politically through protest and technologically through online means. So yeah, it's true. Both the government and private companies can censor stuff. But private companies are a little bit scarier because they have no constitution to answer to. They're not elected, really, right? They don't have constituents or voters. All of the protections we've built up to protect against government tyranny don't exist for corporate tyranny in these privately owned spaces that we live in. You know, I think we first saw this in the 90s with malls, right? As malls became the cool place for kids to hang out, all of these freedoms that we had against the government we lost in the mall because the mall was a private company that could throw people out for saying the wrong thing or wearing the wrong shirt. Now, Facebook has kind of become the mall. It's where everyone hangs out. And so the private company that owns Facebook can tell you, oh, don't use those kinds of words. Don't use those sorts of pictures. Don't talk with those people. All of these constitutional rights that we take for granted are now run by a private company that doesn't have to answer to the Constitution.